Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Healing with the Homies. I'm your host Adam Taharoui and before we kick into things today, I'd just like to take a minute to say a huge thanks to everybody who gave my first video a chance um, and I really, really appreciate all the positive feedback and messages that I got. Um, yeah, I, I didn't expect to get that much of a response for the first video. You know, I got 1500 views on that and I mean, for someone who put out their first episode of a podcast, you know, I, I thought that was that was pretty good. So, you know, um, yeah, thank you guys very much. So, anyway, this week, um, I'd like to discuss a story. I'm gonna share a story with you. Something that happened to me would be nine years ago, roughly this time. I would have been a student in Waterford Institute of Technology. I was studying international business and French at the time. And so, being young, dumb, and fairly reckless, <clears throat> we decided to have my first uh, magic mushroom trip. So, give you a little bit of background about what happened. Uh, I met a guy, uh, a guy who's, who's still a good friend to this day, and he had uh, roughly around an ounce of mushrooms, like dry magic mushrooms. So, anybody who's in the know, you know, you don't eat them fresh and their potency is quite limited. You eat them dry. So basically in the spirit of harm reduction and for educational purpose, would it be in magic mushroom season at the moment? Yeah, I, I'd like to go through this, uh, this deeply, deeply profound, a terrifying and beautiful experience because it's something still to this day that I remember. So yeah, hopefully if there's anybody out there at the moment who's considering going doing shrooms, you might, be able to take something away from what I'm saying here, you know, and if you do end up, you know, you, you, you might approach the experience um, with a bit more caution maybe, you know, because it uh, magic mushrooms can be a lot of fun at low doses, but you know, if you go into a deep experience there and you could end up having something similar to what happened to me and yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty tough experience to go through, although not completely unrewarding in and of itself so with that in mind i suppose we'll get into it so <clears throat> uh, at the time myself my roommate and this guy who uh, had uh, magic mushrooms they were uh, liberty caps so the ones that are they grow between um september and october in ireland so essentially i probably ate roughly between two to three grams to start off okay so I, as I said, didn't know what to expect, didn't know what I was getting in for, and it ended up, yeah, being, being a wild ride. So the first evening, um, basically what happens is three of us uh, are sitting there together, we're in my apartment, put on some nice music, you know, have the lights setting all good, and so we eat the shrooms. So within 10, 15 minutes now, uh, they were they were coming on me pretty hard. I, I'd done them on an empty stomach, so I was coming up nice and fast. And I was having this experience of like almost like a drunkenness. So that drunk kind of heavy feeling, and very 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 quickly, I start to feel like blissful. I feel amazing, and I'm giggling and laughing, and I start to get this kind of childlike wonder take me over. And so <laughs> my roommate at the time. Uh, he he had a small amount and he he couldn't handle the, the the taste so while this is going on he's in the corner um making some toast and scrambled eggs <laughs> and he ends up making himself a little magic mushroom uh, egg sandwich so um i was seeing a girl at the time and for whatever reason i, just, I decided to text her i don't i just text her maybe 20 minutes into the experience and i was like please come over, it'd be really nice to have you here. This is just, it's starting to shape up like a pretty amazing night. So, uh, as I'm typing this message, you kind of, the fractals started appearing in my phone. And uh, it was a Samsung Galaxy S2 at the time. It was, you know, like a nice little piece of tech uh, back then. So, I'm kind of like in awe of my phone. It's like, it, the screen starts to get deeper and deeper and deeper and more infinite and all of a sudden I'm just like my phone has become this infinitely deep and complicated thing and I just I'm yeah completely taken away by the phone so I'm sitting there and this is 
kind of, I kind of like ignored the guys for maybe five minutes, and I was just literally, you know, probably looking at nothing on my phone, just flicking it like, whoa. So I uh, started to get more and more and more giggly, getting into the swing of things, and yeah, enjoying myself. So, um, one of my mates then, he's probably doing the same amount as me, roughly two to three grams. So, we're in the experience, having a good time, all's going well. Now, um, you know, there's not much, say maybe for the first 40 minutes then, we're kind of getting to the point of about an hour. Around an hour now, I'm in this moment where the intensity have been growing and growing and growing. So we get to around an hour and I am just completely in awe of what I'm seeing. I mean, there's just beautiful, beautiful colors everywhere and I'm just having these deep, like insightful thoughts. And so my roommate decided he was gonna close his eyes and see what was going on inside. And so he's like, he's having this beautiful experience where he's sharing with us where he's like, I'm flying on a butterfly. So he's he's like, I'm on this butter, giant butterfly's back and I'm flying through this forest. And he's, he's enjoying himself. So I, I decided to join him. So I closed my eyes and for me, uh, it's more like 3D cubes. So they're like these 3D fluorescent green cubes and they start to unfold. It's like it started off as one square cube and then they just started to expand and became more and more and more and more. So I'm sitting in this experience and I'm really, really enjoying it. So I come out and I don't know, I just start to feel like primal. I start to feel like I'm going right back to my, um, to my roots. And I'm just like, guys, what the fuck is this? What? I started to laugh at the idea of the English language. I'm like, why, why do we always speak English? Like, wh wh where did these words come from? Like, you know, because at some stage, like, people are going around going, blah, 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 blah. And so I just start spewing or nonsense because I'm finding this hilarious, right? So we're in this experience, and, you know, all three of us are having a fantastic time as we were expecting, you know, all's going well. So uh, the dude who brought over the shrooms. <clears throat> And this is where things start to get a little bit hairy, right? So at this stage, he's he's kind of jumping around ecstatic and he's like proclaiming, arms open, the universe doesn't exist. No, apologies. I am the universe. I am the universe. So we're like, okay, I'm laughing my ass off. And he's like, everything's alive. I'm a one with everything. I am the universe. So we're like, all right, pretty cool. So, so I'm laughing my ass off at this, right? And, uh, around this stage, me and him kind of gave each other the eye. Ah, uh, yeah, we were like, let's do it. So, probably ate about another another gram and a half, two grams, so you're talking, I'm borderlining on, I'm not sure if many of you are familiar with the uh, um, philosopher and ethnobotanist by the name of Terence McKenna, who would have been one of the leading pioneers in terms of speaking about the benefits of psychedelics and what they can do for human beings in terms of healing. So he has benchmarked five grams as the heroic dose. So he recommends mushrooms are not to be done. Um, he says, if you want to get a full spiritual benefit out of a mushroom experience, you should have five dry grams of mushrooms in a room on your own, sitting up, meditating in silent darkness. And he reckons at that dose, that's when, you know, uh, very, very, very deep, spiritual, profound insights come to the forefront for human being. And like, you can go really, really deep into the psyche and do some healing. So I didn't know any of this now. This is all stuff I've learned, um, you know, after this evening. So we're touching on this now. Look, guys, I'm estimating here. I didn't have a scale, so I might not have touched on that heroic dose on the evening. I, I it might have been three, might have been four, but I do do know we we did a fuckload. We we did do a lot, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, anyway, so at this stage, I was DJing and I put on pumped up kicks. So I'm sitting back and I'm listening to this song. And as I'm listening to it, I feel like this, this build up of like, all I could describe it as is like bliss. This, this, it's like someone was knocking on the door inside my consciousness. So it's like, knock, 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 right in the middle of my brain. And I'm just like feeling this like slowly coming. And then it was like, boom, the dam exploded. And the moment that happened, I, I was sitting on the couch and it was just like whoosh. 
the room just immediately turned into this cascade of red, yellow, green, blue, and it was just like, poof, 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 just changing colors beautifully. And I was just in awe. And as that happened, when the floodgates released, so to say, with the visuals, this beautiful wave of bliss came over and there was, there was no moving for me. At this stage now, I am like just on the couch in complete awe and I am watching this happen. Now, I don't know if you, any of you are familiar with a medical condition called synesthesia. So synesthesia is a very rare condition in human beings where they can actually see sounds. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think I'm right on this one. So anyway, I started to experience this. So my speaker's over to my right hand side and as Pumped Up Kicks hits the chorus, musical notes, roughly about this size, they were big. They just start coming out of the speaker and they're changing colors and vibrating. So to speak, the music's, it's just going in complete synchronicity with the music. And it was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life because I was looking at the song going through the room dancing, the music came alive essentially, and it was just showing itself to me, revealing itself, just floating across the room. I was completely, completely like just speechless. I did, there are no words for it really. It was, a, it was a very, 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 very beautiful experience. And I have to say now, for where I was at in my head, probably like I, I was dealing with a lot of demons. Obviously, if any of you listened to the first episode, I would have explained from my father, uh, tragically passed and in a car crash accident I would have I would have had quite much very much sort of victim mentality you know I would have been um I I basically would have had this massive chip on my shoulder towards life life in and of itself but really you know that that uh that all manifested as a lack of self-love a lack of self-esteem and you know uh this experience kind of really it, it was one of the first times I truly, truly, truly felt grateful to be alive. It was one of the first times that I really, really, really was like, just, whoa, life actually can be a beautiful experience because, you know, if you're an eight-year-old kid and you wake up one morning and your dad's not around, you know, you're, you're kind of thrown into the deep end and you're left with, for me, I was left with this automatic worst case scenario mentality so like even with a positive situation like for example my birthday parties I, I, I just I was always afraid of having a birthday party I, for some reason I guess maybe because he wasn't there or maybe because the fear of disappointment the fear of friends that I wanted to show up not showing up but there was something I, I never wanted to have a birthday party after I lost my dad yeah but anyway this was one of the first times I reconnected with that self-love and and I yeah genuinely got this love for for myself and a new respect and way a new lens and through which I viewed the world I was just like okay wow maybe there is something to this maybe there is a bit of mystery a bit of wonder and a bit of joy to be explored here you know maybe it's not all fucking doom and gloom like I'm like I was convinced it was so while I'm having my beautiful uh, experience of music coming to life and dancing in front of me my mate <laughs> who dropped a couple more grams of me he's going the opposite way so i turn around and, and at this stage r roughly around the same time as i'm having this experience the girl that i was dating she showed up to the house thankfully because she, she 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 was needed so um basically he went wrong hit him too hard the mushrooms came on he started sweating i could see something was going wrong and i was like are you okay man what's going on like you're starting to sweat you don't you look a bit tense and he's like the universe doesn't exist now this is the guy who half an hour later was proclaiming he was the universe he was one and with everything so the universe doesn't exist he's screaming the universe doesn't fucking exist there's aliens 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 Ah, and I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. Now, this is when shit gets wild. I'm like, man, bro, 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 calm down. Come on, come on, come with me, come with me. Let's calm, let's calm. And I'm looking at the chicken there and I'm like, let's do this. Let's let, let's bring him back. Now, my roommate being a bit of an asshole, 
he just decided to go outside. He rang a couple of our friends from back home and started laughing, just kind of telling them this guy's inside losing the plot while we're trying to calm this guy down because he's fucking in the middle of a bad trip. You know what I mean? So basically, it was pretty fucking difficult. He ended up dropping his pants, uh, sorry for the excuse of French, pissing all over my carpet and on the floor in my hall. And I was like, oh no. So I was like, please man, stop. And he's still screaming, aliens, aliens. And I'm like, oh no. So he just goes and punches his fist through the plasterboard wall in my house. And I was like, oh no, man. So <laughs> yeah, he's pissing all over my apartment, punching holes in the wall and screaming about uh, aliens. I'm like, all right, okay, maybe this wasn't the best idea in the world, lad, you know? Um, anyway, myself and his girl, she really, she was able to calm him down. Just her, her way was good. She was calming. She was able to just talk him down, tell him everything was going to be okay. Because I was a little bit like, I obviously because I'm tripping as hard as he is, you know what I mean? I'm just having a polar opposite effect. I'm, I'm on the good side of things. He's on the negative side of things. So yeah, I was finding it hard to deal with. Anyway, we eventually managed to get him to calm down. We send him into the bedroom and we're like, all right, man, relax just breathe just go and lie in my bed and just you can have it for the evening just turn off the lights and just breathe just you'll be fine you'll be fine you'll be fine so that was that calmed him down um so myself my roommate and uh this other girl we're back outside and we're we're chilling in the kitchen again and you know around that point i think the intensity of everything that he was going through sort of kind of brought me back down a little bit so I'm sitting on the couch then, and I'm chilling, having a nice conversation, having a great time, and I'm relaxed. Uh, so, I feel like I've been through a roller coaster ride. For, for anybody who's had a similar experience, a kind of like a high quantity. Now, this is the thing. You come back down, you're saying, whoa, you know, amazed at what you've just gone through, but you're also like slightly relieved that you're, you know, you're, you're on the other side. You've just, you've just gone through an amazing experience and you know that there's a reason why they call them trips. So I'm coming back down to earth and I really, really, really start to feel at this stage, just, yeah, wow. Like what, what a, what a, what a great experience. I'm so grateful to be alive. Um, and essentially that was that night. Oh no. So, um, everybody goes to bed and I decided I was gonna stay on my couch, let Johnny have the room, so, um, uh, yeah, everybody went home, I'm on the couch, and basically, I closed my eyes and I lay down to go to sleep, and this was beautiful. In my mind's eye, I was suspended in the cosmos, a couple of kilometers, I, I, I don't know, I'm outside the Earth's atmosphere and I'm looking at Earth spinning and, and the beautiful thing about it was i was there like it was profound it wasn't just like you know looking at a stock image on google maps of the earth's atmosphere i felt the weightlessness of being an atom suspended in space i felt the freeness of gravitylessness in in like like what space would feel like that airless vacuum you know uh, and i had my eyes closed for maybe two or three seconds and I opened them back up in like, like, whoa, whoa. And because it was so, so mind blowing. Like, and, and the feeling of weightlessness was quite like, it was quite very, very, very much different to what it feels like to be in, inside the human body. So I was like, oh my God, close my eyes. Can I have some more of that? God, that was it. No more visuals. We're just back, back to baseline pretty much. Yeah, pretty cool. That 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 was a sign of things to come. So let's go forward a week. Um, the three of us get together again, okay. And now this is where I have to give a warning, okay, because this time I had I I had an experience similar to what happened to my mate the week before. Um, so as I said, guys me speaking about this here obviously it's a point of harm reduction because we know magic mushrooms are illegal in ireland now in certain countries like say for example in america in denver colorado in amsterdam portugal they're decriminalized and they're now being used by psychologists in clinical situations to help people with say for example post-traumatic stress disorder in particular in america they're doing it with um 
people who army veterans, so people who have been in war and come back traumatized, different situations like this, and a lot with addictions as well. So, if you would like to look into some of the benefits of this, there's a company called MAPS, which is the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, and they're doing some groundbreaking work um, in the UK and in America at the moment. Um, so yeah, the way I'm seeing things now in 2020, because psilocybin was made illegal in 2005 by Mary Harney. Um, so they were they were legal to buy and you could get them in there's a health food shop in my local area that actually used to sell them up until 15 years ago so you know they are starting to make they're coming back in for discussion in the mainstream in terms of actually being used for the medicinal benefits in the right way so for me going back into my second experience my mindset was that was amazing i would like more of that like say for example you would do with a night's drinking or you know if you were getting stoned with your mates you had a good experience and you want to experience that again and then you know you repeat these things you see you you might get into a habit of doing it quite often so absolutely no way that was going to happen to me with uh, psilocybin to be honest guys i have not had experience with psychedelics after this experience until last year when I was in Australia and I was in a really, really good mental headspace and I did them with a group of people who I trusted and I wanted to have around me and I felt comfortable with sharing these experiences with. It this this jarred me for quite a long time. And to be honest, I am very, very, very grateful it did so because I think at that point in my life, I was quite lost and I could have gone down the wrong route. I you know, genuinely could have gone the wrong way, you know? Um, <clears throat> but it really me read it really made me reevaluate my relationship with alcohol, and um, because at that time I was doing a lot of uh, I, I was very 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 much so. Um, what's the word? Uh, I've, I I get into a lot of fights when I was drunk, so I would have been quite an aggressive drunk. But the thing is, never aggressive when I could remember it. I only ever got into difficult situations because i'm a very friendly guy after a few beers but what was happening what i was doing at that time was because i was on quite a self-destructive path i would drink hard liquor like whiskey or vodka or something to the extreme so before i went out i'm gone like blacked out cannot remember like cannot remember anything so it's in situations like that there was times where i'd wake up and i'd be like, what the hell happened last night you know and i do stuff that i'd be completely ashamed about and i just wake up with this feeling of fear and anxiety in my chest like we, we we've all had, we've all had the fear you know we've all had the fear with alcohol so anyway i digress um let's get back to night two now as well i know i just spoke about say doing a roughly four to five gram dose um give or take but on this occasion coming with a warning here guys i had my tough experience on no more than two and i don't even think it was that like this is this is what that was another thing that kind of shook me i was like wow i didn't think i was going to go that deep this evening i thought it was going to be more of a laxy days evening now so it's the same setting uh, actually the girl i'm dating and my two mates so the guys decided to put on scream Okay, we, we all know the slasher movie, so I'm like, I disagreed. I was like, no, thank you. Like, that's just bad vibes, man. Like, I, I, I don't want to watch this movie. And like, man, do you not remember the experience you had last week as well? You know, the universe didn't exist. Aliens, man, you, you know, are you sure you want to do this? So he was like, yeah, 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 it'll be fine. You know, I'm over it. I was like, okay, cool. So I decided I didn't want to engage in the movie. I cuddled into the girl. Um, dropped the shrooms and I decided I was going to experience from say from baseline to the mushrooms coming on I was going to sit and close my eyes so I, I called right into her closed my eyes and I went off on this journey now this was amazing the first half of the experience so I'll tell you what happened it brought me right back to where we left off it was pr pretty profound. So I'm back suspended weightless in the cosmos around Earth's atmosphere. And this time, instead of say, I was kind of like 
looking at the earth and this time now we revolve around it so I'm slowly slowly but surely floating around the earth and I stop over South America and at this point I was brought closer so it was like we zoomed in I, I flew down basically and then I was stopped and let me have a good look now a couple of thousand kilometers roughly I think off to the left coast of off the apologies off to the west coast of um, South America there's a small island which is shrouded in mystery which is still uh, which historians archaeologists still can't figure out um, goes by the name of Easter Island Easter Island has these massive heads stone carvings which have been built on this extremely small remote island and people are baffled by it they don't know how they're there and even for me i became fascinated after this experience because i until that day had no knowledge of easter island now my rational mind um told me that I picked up, essentially I said, look, you know what the globe looks like and the subconscious mind is extremely powerful. So some part of your psyche, obviously, when you look at a map, your brain is more like, it's in my subconscious mind. The map, the, the earth's mapped out in my subconscious mind. So when I was on the mushrooms, I reckoned that my mind created this trip by, it, it knew where Easter Island was in the map and was able to bring me there through this experience. So that's how I rationalized it at the time. So now with my eyes closed, it shows me this island and it was like I stopped and could see it very 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 clearly and I went and I found it on Google Maps the next day found out what Easter Island was and then I spent you know went down a, a bit of a wormhole there trying to the, trying to find out about the history the culture and the indigenous people that lived there because I was like whoa so anyway I shoot down and land on the beach now uh, again this is all my eyes closed so very very vivid flashing images of this so i'm like smack face down on the beach like someone who's just you know landed there off a ship crashing or whatever you know and these people on the island they were wearing like uh, they had spears long hair brown skin you know almost like samoan looking okay and um, big guys and they're wearing like they're they've, they've got clothes like skirts that they've made out of i don't know some animal skin or whatever these guys pick me up and they're like welcoming and they're like come 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 let's show you so and this is happening this is happening in flashing images like shoof, very vivid so we go and they bring me along the island and into this temple now this temple is down underneath the earth and it's in a circular room okay and in the middle of this room, it's, there's all candles, sorry, just torches, apologies, torches on the wall. So they're all lit. And in the middle, there's this pillar. And there's like all this tribe are just in a circle and they're sitting down meditating and they're chanting. They're getting into this trance. And in the middle of the pillar, it's like it's connected with the center of the earth and it's revolving with muck. So I am just in this experience watching this, like say it's, essentially it felt like this pillar went all the way, way down to the center of the planet and this earth was connected with it it was just revolving it was actually it was alive it was its own thing like it looked like some magic pillar pretty cool okay so that's the end of that experience at that moment i decided to open up my eyes i was like whoa i want to share this with the guys so i opened up my eyes and now the girl I was dating was not there. My arm's like this, you know, I'm, I'm cuddling and I cannot see her. So I'm like, okay, pretty strange. Now I try to pull away. And as I'm trying to pull away, I feel like heavy, like I can't move. And so I did one big tug. And like, as I pulled away kind of quite quickly, I see, instead of seeing her, I see a demon manifest itself it was like made out of like flesh blood and guts it was like it, it was pretty fucking scary and it jumped at me like Wah! so i jump up off the couch screaming and i like literally ran to the corner of the room and i was like holding myself like oh my god what was that guys looked at me and they're obviously everyone's a little bit alarmed so they're like are you okay and i was like i looked around i was like took a few deep breaths <clears throat> and you know 
everything was kind of back to normal. There's some nice flowing colors in the room. I was like, yeah, okay guys. I had a small little bad trip there now. Um, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I was back to pretty colors and having a nice time. So I sat down and, you know, I, I was still a little bit shook, but that was it, I, I was okay. So here we go. Don't roll a giant at this stage, because that's what I did. Very bad mistake. So I roll a spliff. Uh, yeah, not a good idea. So I roll a spliff thinking, okay, I'm the big man now. You know what I mean? I'm fucking, I'm good. So it doesn't matter what just happened. I, I, I gotta smoke this spliff and fucking pretend I'm okay. Yeah, right. Bad idea. So halfway through this giant, the intensity kicks in. It just, just upped, ramped up in intensity. And I was like, okay. And then I just got nauseous and I didn't have a chance, guys. Boom, projectile vomited all over the wall. I ran up, went into the bathroom and as I'm vomiting in the bathroom, into the toilet bowl, I'm starting to panic. I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. And now the toilet bowl starts to disappear. Like, you know, like that rabbit hole down in Alice in Wonderland, it just went. And so my depth perception was completely being messed with. And I'm like, oh my God, I want this to stop. Please stop, please stop, please stop. The panic just sets in. So I uh, turn around, a couple of guys are at the door of the bathroom and they're like, are you okay? I look over my shoulder and the bathroom door, it just looked, the bathroom just shoots away. You know what I mean? The door just went. So I am looking and I'm like, I'm never getting out of here. Fuck, that, the door's gone. I'm like, oh my God. So. I'm completely resisting the experience. Not one part of me is gonna let go. And so a word of advice now, something I've learned from research and study is if you're in a bad experience, you have a difficult experience like that. One of the things you can do, and we're quite, we're quite close off to it as Westerners, like is to sing or like even chant, like for example, like a Buddhist mantra, like Om, if you do this, if you just focus on either your breath or making a sound rather than on the experience, you know, you, you can actually turn that around. You can bring that back to a positive, to a positive experience from something that's turning quite difficult, difficult being and I understand. And now I, I was terrified, absolutely terrified. So I get up, I eventually managed to get out of the bathroom with the guy's help because it's just so, it was very confusing to me. So I get out, someone's like, no, one of the guys is sitting on the couch and he's got his legs like on the coffee table. I can't see his legs. I can see him sawn in half at the torso and he's looking at me, you okay now buddy? Smiling and I just see blood shooting out from his torso and I was like, oh no, fuck, 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 fuck. So I look down and where my hand should be, I just see stumps cut off and I was like, right. I, I am just completely like, you know, completely in irrational fear now. Well, not irrational fear, I'm completely like, just like, no, 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 no. So the guys are like, have some water. I'm like, I have no fucking hands. How am I meant to hold a bottle of water? Like, right, so, not good. I, at one stage I touched my jaw, like, and I felt like it was just disappearing. So I managed to kind of get it under control. So. so um, by doing this is really crazy. Now what's actually happening to me is the boundaries between me and the world around me are dissolving. They're dissolving rapidly. It's like I am being sucked into oneness with everything, but I did just, you know, there was a lot of fear, so I cannot let go at this moment. I am like, no way, no how, okay? So I am just resisting as much as possible. So what I start to do is I start to like dance and I dance in like this circle from one side of my kitchen to the other. And as I move, I get taller and taller and taller and taller. And you know, eventually I have like spaghetti arms. I, I'm literally like, you know, stretch Armstrong. I'm just completely spaghetti. Everybody in the room is tiny. The, the room becomes small. I become so much bigger than it. And as I come around in my like circle that I was dancing in, I get smaller and smaller and smaller and the room gets bigger and bigger and bigger until we have the complete opposite effect. I'm like a hobbit and the room is like, uh, castle. Okay, so now 
I felt like at this stage, I was like, okay, if I keep dancing in this circle and this keeps happening, this isn't too bad. At least all my limbs are attached again. I'm still a little bit freaked out, but if I just keep dancing in this circle, eventually this will end. You know, I know in the back of my head, it's going to stop eventually. I know that this was self-inflicted. So it's not going to be forever. It's, it's that one little thought I had in the back of my head. And again, I'm oh, sorry, I was very close to saying uh, the girl I was dating's name, but obviously I, I, I'm not gonna do that for the sake of anonymity. So basically what happens at this stage is after about half an hour of me doing my little uh, spaghetti hobbit dance, she asked me if I would like to go outside. And I just said, no, I'm terrified at the thoughts of coming out of my circle. She said, come on, Adam, we'll go for a walk. We'll calm you down. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So eventually she was able to coerce me gently into coming outside and getting some fresh air. So we go for a walk and we come down from the apartment I was staying in. We go down to the street and we're walking along. Now, as we come along around the corner, I can see maybe, you know, a hundred foot down the road, there's a telephone pole or sorry, no, a, a street lamp. Um, and as I looked at the street lamp, I felt this bing, bing, and I was teleported like instantly. It was like this, literally this shock, like whoosh, whoa. And I had teleported from the corner, a hundred foot back, to that street lamp down the road. And I looked and I was like, hey, so, whoa. I was like, have I been speaking to you last, whatever, maybe a minute, minute, like minute and a half, because I don't remember anything. I have just teleported. It's been like bing, bing, like it was instant. And she was like, yeah, no, you've, you've been talking, you've been fine. But for me, that chunk of my life just disappeared and it was like, teleportation it was it was pretty cool that moment actually calmed me down a lot that that i was like oh wow that was that that was that was amazing so kind of back this stage now and there's still a lot of fear in me i still still feel a little just a little bit afraid but i'm like you know okay we're, we're through the worst of it all right so we go back to the house and i kind of relax and the guys were fine that even they both had a pretty chill and nice experience um yeah so I guess that was that. Now it did, as horrible as it was, I gained this, I gained a newfound respect um, and like lens. I, I, got, I, got, I got a new lens through which I view the world. So mother nature in and of itself, like, forests, trees, rivers, things that I never really had any time or connection for, I suddenly felt drawn to them. So, so I did, after this experience, want to spend a lot more time outdoors. And I, yeah, I, I got this deep connection, I guess. It was, it was quite a grounding experience and it did stop me from going very, very, very heavy with the partying because in Waterford at that time as well, there was, you know, when you have a big group of college kids that are young and dumb and they're kind of in first year of college, you know, stuff does get hairy. And so there was a lot of partying being done, but I was able to kind of take a step back after that and realign my focus and kind of do a bit of a study, get into college. And so genuinely, I feel like benefited me massively. However, it was terrifying. And this is why I decided this week before I've got a lovely friend of mine who I met in Bali, uh, Mr. Winter, a fellow podcaster, who's going to do an episode with me tomorrow, um, which we'll release next week. And what we're going to do is the two of us are gonna, we've both been working with uh, Breathwork since Bali. And that was how we clicked, that was how we connected. So what we're going to do is our podcast together, we're gonna have a little chat and a little catch up, and we're gonna finish off the episode with doing maybe a round or two of some deep breathing so um next week at the end of the podcast if you'd like to join us in that field uh, you'll feel more than welcome to but um yeah i have generally gone for the 30 minute mark on my podcast episode guys so i'm running i'm running 10 minutes over time which is which is pretty good because i guess it's pretty good so as long as you don't uh, mind listening to the end all the way to the end of the episode i ho hope it wasn't too long hope the story didn't bore you or anything like that and as i said this was about harm reduction and education 
So I don't promote the use of psychedelics in any countries which are illegal, including the one in which I live, Ireland. Um, I think if you are drawn to do an experience like that, there are places in Portugal and Amsterdam that are offering retreats with um, clinical psychologists, master's degree, PhDs, people who have spent their lives as working professionals in a clinical setting working with um, these substances. It's not something you should jump into lightly just, just for the crack. I mean, you can have a good experience like I did have on the first evening. However, the universe, the universe might cease to exist. You know what I mean? And when that happens, it gets hairy. So yeah, listen guys, I really, really, really appreciate you tuning in and for um, listening to this episode. So okay, goodbye um, until next week. Thank you very much.